Are you ready? Cosmic catastrophe revealed this evening. You're looking at the Guyaju Caves, located in a secluded gorge in the west of Yanging County. The Guyaju Caves, or ancient cliff dwellings, are about 50 miles northwest of Beijing. They occupy over 24.7 acres. Now, in this 100,000 square meters on a steep cliff, it is the largest site of ancient cliff residences in all of China. That means there's more than this site. Now, in this particular site, there are 117 caves in total, forming a cell-like spectacle of the cliff. Some experts calculate that it needed 100 people to work continuously for over five years to complete such a large group of caves. But they would be idiots. Because in this regard, this site is also the first maze in China, M-A-Z-E, and the second Zucudian Peking Man site. Now, Peking Man is a hominid that is dated from roughly 750,000 years ago, making this the oldest occupied site ever. Now, the Zakudian Peking Man is supposedly an Ice Age Peking Man, which only dates back 18,000 years, which would make these cliff dwellings the longest continuously inhabited dwellings anywhere on Earth. For over 17,000 years, they were inhabited. That's crazy. Now, 91 caves are scattered along the southern and northern and eastern slopes of the front gorge, while a further 26 are located on the eastern slope of the near gorge. It seems strange that most of the caves were chiseled out of the shaded slopes, having in mind the cold winter weather around Beijing. And more importantly, I located a lentil here that was actually inserted into the cliff face. This is non-indigenous rock inserted here into the slot, making this quite spectacular. Additionally, up here, this carved lentil, which is of the existing rock, is indicative of the, of the Chacoan architecture here in the southwest of the U.S. Chacoan architecture here. In place lentil here, which is more indicative of the megalithic builders of Egypt and Turkey. So lots of interesting things going on here. So let's continue. Now the orderly location of the caves, caves in the cliff face resembles a multi-storied stone building. And I'm sure you would agree with that. And inside it's no less spectacular with shelves and lentils and fire pits. There are stone stairs, stone ladders, and bridges connecting the rooms on different floors. The caves have different sizes and shapes. No matter what shape the cave may be, they all bear features of modern dwellings, just like I pointed out. Although the stone rooms are generally rectangular, there are some that are square or round, about 5.6 to 5.9 feet in height and 3.3 to 19.7 feet in depth. The largest room is over 24 square yards or 20 square meters, and the smallest only 3.6 square yards or 3 square meters, 9 by 9. There are some single rooms, some suites, and many three-room apartments, none of which have pillars or beams. Many traces of human occupation exist at the Gayu Caves, such as the site of gateways, windows, stone beds, closets, lampstands, cooking stoves, and horse mangers. The stone bed in one of the caves is large enough to hold two people. The rooms in one of the caves with horse mangers and stables are large enough to contain four or five horses. There is an exquisite duplex apartment located at the highest place on the cliff, which you're looking at now. It's called the Gansizizi, or the Kumo Shai, Chieftain's Mansion. Four exquisitely carved stone columns 
support the top of the cavern. Inside the capacious main hall, there is a big bed in the center and stone decks and stools. Look at the inlays and the carvings and the alcoves. What was planted up here? What could it have looked like when it was being used? It's absolutely amazing and unprecedented in its scope and scale, except when you do some research and you start finding these structures in Turkey, in Spain, in Greece, and all over the world, including my neck of the woods. Now, according to the experts, these cave homes of Guyuju, about 90 kilometers northwest of Beijing, were occupied during the Chinese Tang Dynasty, the most recent occupation, A.D. 1680 to 1907, by the Zhiyi people. There were over 100 homes carved into the hillside, some of which with stylish pillars of stone are arranged in two village clusters supplied with fresh water from a natural spring when they were occupied with homes that would have had timber frame facades and thatch roofs. So these would have all had awnings and balconies, and it would have been amazing. But this is the most recent iteration of an already existing palace. And I can prove it to you because I'm a geologist with major field experience. And I've been around the world, thousands of sites. And we're going to talk about some of the stairways here, some of the slots, and the rock type in general. Now, this rock type is a pink granite. One of the hardest rocks on Earth, naturally forming in batholiths and lacoliths in North America and worldwide. And here in China, there's a large pink granite batholith here, and they've actually carved into this. Now, pink granite has a hardness of over 6.5 because it is mostly quartz with associated plagioclase feldspar and other types of feldspar, which are at the hardness of 6.5 to 7.2 making this impossible to cut with steel. So either you had to use the same rock or diamond blades to cut into here. Now, more importantly, this is a staircase. And as you can clearly see, these stairs are rounded, which means over an inch of granite had to be eroded at the points of these steps. And upon further looking, you can even see a central groove where water has worn its way down there. Almost an inch or two of weathering has occurred in this staircase alone. I'm sure you all would agree. I'm going to quickly bring you over here to a paper from the University of Vermont in Burlington. Now, Pearl, Paul Bierman gets the utmost respect from me because some of his analysis is some of the most important in erating erosional factors in the world. And he's used worldwide in court cases and other things. But how quickly does granite erode? And this is from evidence from analysis in situ. And he's using beryllium-10 and other isotopes that are very highly, that have a very high resolution, which means that we can rely on these numbers quite wholeheartedly. Not only that, if you read the abstract, you're going to find that the erosional numbers vary from two millimeters per million years. Do you see that number? Two millimeters or two meters per million years to up to 20 meters per million years. So let's just go with the 20 meters per million years. And let's say this structure that we're looking at is 20 million years old. Okay? 20 meters per million years means that this structure wouldn't exist. So let's say it's a million years old. At the maximum erosion, we should have 20 meters of erosion. No, we don't see that. We only see a few inches, maybe 20 or 30 millimeters. So let's go with this number, two meters per million years. We need 20 millimeters. So that puts us in the 100,000 year time frame. This structure and this erosion are indicative at the ma maximum 100,000 years. At the minimum, this erosion took tens of thousands of years. There can be no other explanation. This is not recent. This is not a few thousand years old. This has to be tens of thousands of years old to simply erode this at the minimum level, which we see here. So clearly this building 
was occupied and reoccupied time immemorial based on all the in situ erosional analyses based on granite. And that's what we're using here. The Department of Geology, University of Burlington, Vermont, Paul Bierman, and his analysis and the range of how quickly does granite erode? Now, you can make your own call, but we're going with the lowest term. If this erodes at 2 meters per million, that means we would be looking at 0.2 meters per 100,000, which is still much larger than the erosion we've seen. We see 2 centimeters definitely of erosion, and that would bring it in the 10 to 20,000 range. Hello. Right where we want it. Now, an impact crater discovered in the Sahara recently may solve the mystery of King Tut's gemstone, well, in the caves in China and Turkey and North America and worldwide, all over. What the were they doing? And why would they spend so much time digging directly into solid bedrock? Well, the impact crater discovered in the Sahara may solve the mystery of King Tut's gemstone. If you don't know what that is, it's this scarab with this yellow glass from the Syrian desert. Desert glass, which has mystical and magical properties. I even have some of these pieces in my own possession and wear them around my neck sometimes as the pharaohs did. King Tut himself, this is his breastplate. And there's the scarab in question. And there is the Syrian desert glass. Now, the impact, amazing satellite images show the terrain between the villages of Karet Had El Bach and Karet El Al Hafa in Egypt. And an international research team discovered what seems to be previously unknown crater in the midst of the desert. This crater is similar in shape, size, and scale to the Arizona impact crater, meteor crater in Arizona. Not only that, the researchers also found chemical traces supporting the idea that this landform was formed by high energy impact, meaning stishovite, shock quartz, and yes, tectites in the form of reformed volcanic glass, yellow glass that's right here. Wow. Now, the discovery of the Elbar crater could also solve old archaeological mysteries and add insult to injury to the Younger Dryas event. In 1922, entering the impact tomb of Tutankhamun, the British archaeologist Howard Carter discovered the breastplate, which will live in infamy. And here you see the scarab and the beetle. The Libyan desert silica glass, as the material is now called, consists of almost pure silicon dioxide, like quartz but its crystal structure is different. It contains traces of unusual elements, radioactive things, and other elements like iron, nickel, chromium, cobalt, and iridium, which would be suggested as progenitors or objects contained in an impact, an impactor. So something hit, sprayed iron, nickel, chromium, cobalt, and iridium into the atmosphere and was reformed as the Desert glass was melting from the impact and formed into one solid, yes, piece of Libyan volcanic desert glass from an impact, the Younger Dryas impact. Many people are trying to explain this multiplicity of one, two, three Dryas events through the Younger Dryas and a rapid warming. We were being bombarded by meteors and fragments for years sending us into an ice age instantaneously, which lasted for thousands of years. And just like the trend was happening, we warmed rapidly up because after the most major cooling, we were already due to be up here. So we shot up and we continued to shoot up to the normal place of the interstadial. We're about to drop back down into the next interstadial which may involve lots of impacting objects. Are you picking up what I just put down? Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance, and it may not be the sun alone. Doug Vogt's a great guy, and I love his books. But his scientific value is waning. And my science has been the same for four decades.
and we're uncovering the truth. One Egyptian pharaoh at a time. Did you put on your woke glasses tonight? Because I hope that we pointed out that Peking Man 750,000 years ago was found at this site. And more importantly, that the Zuccodian Peking Man, which could only be 18,000 years ago, was also at this site. And it has been occupied since as early as just 600 years ago. This site has been continuously occupied for 16,000 years. The reason they built into the cave was because large impactors were hitting the globe worldwide, North America, everywhere. They burn all the forests. Tomorrow night, I'm going to do a video on the black mats and why the boreal forests in North America burn for thousands of years. Well, the proof is in the data. Forests were burning from here to here. And then it all ended and the flowers bloomed and the oligarchs took control and we were doomed. And we've been slaves ever since up here. But we're about to take back the paradigm of planet Earth because planet Earth is about to take back its people. Hope you got something out of the video. Share this with like-minded people. The facts are right in front of you. 12,000 years ago, we were underground on purpose all over the world. There are hundreds of cities that are either revealed or hidden from you that exist. The military is in half of them. The rest are left for you as UNESCO sites to go visit during the weekend. But the truth is, the history that you know is a mystery. Everything that you've been taught in school is a lie. And the facts are being revealed on this channel day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute due to our, our dedication to the science, not the compliance. We don't wear a mask in the studio, but we wear it in the supermarket because we want to be part of the herd. But at the same time, we want to opt out. You can opt out too. We're just giving you more time. Time to digest the capitulation of the situation that you're in. How quickly does granite erode? Why are these steps rounded? Because people have been walking on them for tens of thousands of years. Be safe. We love you. Rethink reality.